Hi, Marcel, the wood butcher, with another exciting episode. Give me a second to get the wires out of the way and move the camera. Hey, I'm getting pretty good at positioning the camera right back to where it's supposed to be. Okay, uh, this episode is going to be the third video I did on if you ever had a project that maybe you, you rigged up a few a few pieces or it didn't work out the way you want is what you can turn it into to make it a, a saleable or giftable item easily easily but before i go on to that uh we're going to go back in one of the previous episodes somebody asked me uh the aircraft firing rockets you know under my uh, wood butcher sign would it you know and I explained well when I was in the Marine Corps those are the aircraft I work on and uh, what I failed to mention at that time is those are OV 10A aircraft OV 10A Broncos 276 uh, Garrett Air Research Engine 715 shaft horsepower piece counter rotating props but that's all I'll say about that. But that's what what that aircraft is about, and 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 why it's always going to be pictured under my sign. Being a proud Marine, can you tell? Can you tell? Right. Well, and you guys all know that anyway. But anyway, let's get back to the topic at hand. We're going to talk about this. Is the third video I have done uh, on projects that failed, but you can turn them into something that's giftable or saleable, whatever your modus operandi is. Hey, how do you like that? I know a little Latin, <laughs> right, right, right. Or, or whatever your goal is, okay? And I'm going to give you a couple examples today, okay? Uh, those of you that follow me, you know we're working on that eight-tier candle holder, or seven-tier, you know, tapered candle holder. And I posted a video that I really blew it out my ass on cutting, you know, the first angle, the first angle on the two pieces of wood. Stupid me, one of them, I had the wood orientated the, word, the wrong way. And the other one, I just, I just completely frigged the cut up. But did I throw those pieces of wood or those cubes that were just, you know, like, like we got to the point where they were double back taped together. They weren't glued together yet, but they looked pretty darn good. They looked, you know, like, uh, like this. The grain orientation right, rounded corners. You can you can see the different shades of wood, but you can't see the seams so much, you know, and the grain match and stuff like that. And then when we go to our that was the three piece pine stack. And then when we go to our seven piece uh pallet wood stack, you know, you can see and I've got compliments on that chevron grain that i used right because when this is oiled or stained i'm not decided which and like i said this is still taped together once it's clamped and glued those seams will disappear right but anyway what was i to do with the block i really screwed up well i'm going to show you Okay, this is going to be in a couple of steps. Let me blow the sawdust off it. But this is what I turned it into. I'm trying to rotate this on a level span so that you can actually see and I hope the camera focuses this is what I turned it into yes a little pedestal for an American Eagle let me tell you about the American Eagle you talk about recycling I used to have a second flagpole 
that was one of those stick poles, you know, that hang diagonally off the wall of the house, and it had this plastic gold eagle on it. Well, it was about 10 years old, and the eagle, to be honest with you, he looked like shit. So what I did, I hit him with a little cleaning, like a fantastic uh, gangbusters, well not, not gangbusters, grease light, whatever cleaner you want to use, and a plastic brush, cleaned them off real good, cleaned them off real good, so that I could get, and I hope you can see that, where I managed to get all the feathers of the eagle back, and the face looking good. Well, I took the block that I fucked up, excuse me, messed up, and I kind of tapered it, I altered it a little bit, and made it into a little pedestal, stained it with a dark walnut, drilled a hole, a pilot hole in the bottom, and to countersink it, I think that's like a three-eighths, three-eighths inch hole there to countersink it, and I drove the screw right up the eagle's butt, where what used to that little four-pronged plastic piece that fit into the, the metal pole. Oh, that doesn't look good, right? That fits into the metal pole. And that's what I did. So that's how he came out. Oh, big deal. You made an eagle on a mount. Okay. Now, what he's going to get mounted to, I, excuse me, i got to wipe the sawdust off it, right, is... I had a piece of pallet wood that you can see it's a little uneven, you know, it's wide at this end, thin at this end, but it's square here, square across here, and square down here. And I, I didn't stain the bottom yet because there's some drilling to be done yet, but I stained the top basically the same stain dark walnut. See the stain. And this is hand rub. Uh, two coats of the uh, dark walnut stain. I think it was dark walnut. Yeah, it was. It was. And uh, quadruple zero, four zero 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 zero. Was that four or did I go to five? I meant to only go to four. You know, sandings in between layers with the triple or the quadruple zero or four zero steel wool. It's not lacquered yet. But what's gonna happen is this guy is gonna sit on this guy right about like that. And behind the eagle, I'm gonna drill two holes probably on about a 18 to 20 degree angle so that the flags hang kind of angled, you know, this way and that way, right? And I'm undecided whether I'm going to put one flag in the middle that's an American flag or two flags that's, you know, the flag of, for well, the American flag on this side. American flag always goes to the right or the, and whatever branch of service you were in, small flag here. I'm talking the three inch by five inch flags, you know, the little stick flags, right? And mount them there. And then what's going to go here and here are the, uh, the polished brass business card holders. And I'm going to make this a business card holder. Now, I looked at it. And it looks so flat because, oh, and this is all, this is pallet wood. This one here is pallet wood. And this is miscut recycled pine from that failed shadow box I was telling you about in the, uh, in the series about making the, uh, the uh, uh, seven-tiered candle holder, right? But when I put it at eye level or put it at my desk and sat down, it looked too low. So I decided this thing's got to be raised up a bit. So what I did, I used the trusty old bandsaw 
and these rubber stays are anti-slip things that you get when you buy computer parts and different the different electronics you know that are supposed to elevate them and keep them from slipping and stuff like that well don't ever throw them away because <laughs> otherwise you have to buy them and you already bought it so you got it for free but I tried sitting that thing on there and it still looked too low so what I did is I took pieces of wood and I cut them to accommodate oh my fat fingers are gonna be in the way or whatever but I cut them to accommodate these guys and that raises it up about let's see we got a half inch and a half inch that raises it up like an inch because the eagle came from a flagpole top he's kind of looking down and I had to raise them up. So that's what I came up with. Now, these are going to get stained the same color as the, uh, as, as the piece itself. But I guess my point is, that's one way to make something that you blew out your butt. Don't end up in the burn bucket. Hey, it's wood. Wood is nature's gift. Repurpose it as often as you can. And that's the way it's being repurposed so far, okay? Second, I was making a, uh, by a request for somebody, a uh, suet feeder for birds. I make a lot of bird houses. I make a lot of suet feeders, a lot. And I do every one of them according to the Autobahn, National Audubon Society specifications. I have a book about that thick on the National Audubon Society specifications for building birdhouses, feeders, roosting boxes, back boxes, wh whatever you can think about for birds. I don't care if it's eagle, seagull, whatever, whatever, right? But that's the way I build them, okay? Well, anyway... I was asked to build something, and let me grab it for a second. It's in clamps right now, but I'm going to make my point. It's going to end up being a suet feeder. Yes, it's hollowed out. Well, that's upside down. A suet feeder basically designed for woodpeckers. Now, woodpeckers like to rest their tail on something for their stability while they're pecking at suet. I cut the middle out to fit this, sorry, fuck the brand name, they don't give me a dime, right? To fit this suet cage in, right? And it fits right in there, believe me, it does. But it only fits halfway. So the birds can feed from both sides of the feeder, okay? Let me, give me a second to hang this back up to dry. And I'm getting to a point here. I'm really getting to a point about repurposing your waste material. Now, the piece that came out of the center where I cut to fit the suet cage looks like this. Okay. Eh. Doesn't look like much to most people. Okay, yeah, burn bucket or whatever, right? But you use the imagination. You look at my note on the other side. It says, Fire Company Cross. All it takes to turn this in to the, you know, the Maltese Cross that fire departments are famous for using as their logo is maybe... A little bit of cutout on the corners with a bigger Forstner bit and maybe some bandsaw action and this and that. And I am going to make that a tribute to a firefighter cross. Right? I had a piece of pallet wood that I screwed up cutting. And then, excuse me, let me get it. One second. I gotta find it. I gotta find it. Uh, 
hold on, hold on. Take a look at the shop. It's it's sloppy, but it works for me. Oh, here we go. I got it. I got it. Okay. I got it. Okay. Now, this is in really rough form. But this mistake was recouped from... Because I miscut the lengths. Like an idiot. I didn't realize on my chop saw, as I had a stop block just clamped to it with a spring clamp, that it was moving every now and then without realizing it because you live, you learn. I used a, a stop block, a small piece of wood. It was too short. The clamp, the spring clamp didn't have a good grip on it, so it moved. So I really screwed it up. So I'm stuck with this. 12, 13 inch, 13 inch piece of pallet wood that I already had, you know, marked up for something else. And I looked at it and I thought skeleton key. Yeah, I thought skeleton key. This is what I say. Imagination is key. You want to be a good woodworker? Hone your skills and have an open imagination. Be able to visualize. It's like, eh, 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 no, I don't even want to go there. But, eh, eh, you know, but open your mind and visualize. Go to another place and visualize. Well, about 15 minutes on the bandsaw, and one minute on the drill press, and I turned that failed piece of wood. Now, this is really rough. It's not sanded yet. I just finished cutting this on the bandsaw probably about 15, 20 minutes ago. But it turned into this. Now, there's spaces. I already have it measured out. There's spaces for one, two, three, four, five sets of keys to hang on this. Right? That's the front side. It's rough. You think that's rough? Take a look at the back side, how rough that is. But like I said, it hasn't been sanded yet or anything. But anyway, that's just a couple examples of if you fuck something up, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. You're not done with it. It's wood. Incidentally, the other block that I screwed up with the seven-tier uh, candle holder, I'm in the process of sanding it down. And as you can see, I'm not done with it yet, but sanding it down into a dice. The rounded corners to this and that, this, and not with a router, with a sander. I do it by hand, you know, and this... It, it's not perfect yet, but, and this one's glued together. So when I tell you that when things are taped together and glued together, how the seams basically disappear, and you can see why I was saying, how can I do this without getting my fat fingers in the way? Well, I'm not even going to put my fingers in the way. You can see the grain alignment on the raw edge there, and you can see the grain alignment on the raw edge there. The rest were smooth surface, right? Smooth surface, smooth surface, smooth surface. But now you can still see a little bit of the lines here because like I said, I'm not done with it yet. This is rough sanding, but I have it to the rounded edges. And I wouldn't want to be the one to take this to Atlantic City or Las Vegas and, and, and go to a craps table with. But I figured it'd be a nice conversation piece. And I'm thinking of sticking, you know, make it a dice. And sticking a decal holder on the top. I don't know. That might be too far. I, like I said, I don't know. I'm not used to making plans and drawings and stuff like that before I do. I use my imagination and go for it. Right? But... Just some ideas. 
the one that should impress you the most is a cutout like that that can turn out to be anybody that you know that's a fireman or a firefighter or your local fire department and turn that in to a fire department Maltese cross. Let me tell you something. You'll have some very appreciative people that go out of their way to help you and protect you. And that you took the time to think of them. I say that because for a lot of years I was a volunteer fireman in Hal, New Jersey and in Middletown, New Jersey and in Thompson, Pennsylvania. So, hey, I'm a Marine and an old volunteer firefighter. So I think of these things. But use your imagination before you throw anything into. into hold on, hold on. The burn bucket. I have a fire pit in the yard. And when we have fires, we have some good ones. Right. There's some tree limbs and, of course, you know, a lot of the cuttings from here. I got to be honest with you. We have a dog. Uh, one of my videos showed when our rescued uh, Staffordshire, or American Staffordshire Terrier, commonly known as a pit bull, that we adopted and rescued, rescued 45 minutes before he was to put to death in, uh, from, a re from a shelter in Brooklyn, New York. And they delivered him to our house. The dog loves the shop. He loves going through my burn bucket. He loves going through my save bucket. He pulls pieces of wood out. Matter of fact, I had a video on it where he was taking wood out and running in the yard and chewing on it. Now, when he was going to the burn bucket, I didn't mind. But when I saw him taking pieces of oak and pieces of maple and turning them into a gnawing stick, I said, holy shit, no, 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 Phoenix, Phoenix, you can't do that. So you know what I did? I put a red piece of tape around one bucket. That's the good bucket. And kept telling him no. So he doesn't take it out of the good bucket. He can take out of the burn bucket all he wants. I don't care. I don't care. He actually did find a couple of pieces out of the burn bucket that I said, holy crap, I shouldn't burn them. I should keep them. I digress. Anyway, that's today's episode. Uh, we will be back to the uh, seven-tier candle holder quickly. I just got to figure out how to cut it right, and then, then we'll do it. Hey, nobody's perfect. That's what it is. That's why I'm the wood butcher. Okay? But for right now, take care. I hope you enjoyed. Protect your eyes. Protect your lungs. Protect your ears. Don't ever forget about these guys. Actually, I have a video that I wrote down that I want to produce that actually shows some shop safety and the mistakes that I made that sent me to the emergency rooms and the ones that didn't through sure stupidity or sheer stupidity and overconfidence with power tools. And I really want you guys to pay attention to that one. If you ever watch any one of them, when that one's published, please, please watch it. Because it has to do with protecting these and this when it comes to kickback and how to prevent it and stuff like that. Make it a great day and Semper Fi.